So I'd, I'd like to first uh, comment on the um, significance of reading the names that we're honoring today. You know, um, I've been asked this because it's not a tradition that has been usually done at MBT and something that um, I'm at fault for starting it. And it's, it's not to, um, to give me more anxiety because I really have a hard time reading all those Japanese names. I'm like so focused trying to read them correctly. Um, but by reading each name, it's really our way to remember each person. You know, they've, they've all made an impact on our lives and we're guided by them, all whether we knew them or not. So we're the result of infinite actions and countless causes and conditions. Some we may know, some we may be aware of, and but some we may never know. Yet here we are together in this moment. So also know that our actions influence others as well. So how much more so that we should live our lives to the best of our ability. So to our, really our highest potential respect, kindness, wisdom, and compassion. And this is living the life of Nembutsu. So I recently watched uh, the Disney animated movie Coco. Have you seen that one? Yeah. Uh, it's, it, what, which was inspired by the Mexican holiday Day of the Dead. And, and there actually, if you look for them, there are many Buddhist messages in the movie. And I, I has often said, uh, I've often said that the Dharma can be found everywhere. But one that stuck with me was when the spiritual, in the spiritual world, a being will disappear when they are eventually forgotten. You know, they don't know where they go, the character said, but, but uh, the character said, also said, it will eventually happen to everyone. And there's lyrics in the song, uh, Remember Me, that was featured in the movie. Let me just read some of those lyrics to you. It goes, remember me, though I have to say goodbye. Remember me, don't let it make you cry. For even if I'm far away, I hold you in my heart. I sing a secret song to you each night we are apart. Remember me, though I have to travel far. Remember me each time you hear a sad guitar. Know that I'm with you the only way that I can be. Until you're in my arms again, remember me. So to me, this is why it's important to read, read each person's name. So to begin my talk for the monthly memorial service, I usually you know, read a passage from Shinran Shonin or one of the seven masters. Um, but today I'd like to try something a little bit different. And so this reflection is a bit untraditional, but these times call for some untraditional things. You know, I think um, we're all more reflective thinking about our lives as a result of the pandemic and really what's going on in the world. I mean, the list can really seem endless. You know, whether it's climate change, um, the, the, the fear or the risk of loss of reproductive rights, you know, crimes in our city. I, I um, unfortunately get regular reports that really scare me. And, you know, the war in Gaza, the, in Ukraine, and really many areas of the world that are not in the news. And the, the protests on college campuses. You know, we all carry many different emotions that are going through our heads, especially those of anxiety over the unknown and over the uncertainty of the future. So this can either paralyze us or bring us to action, both of which are understandable uh, results. So the foundation for our tradition is wisdom and compassion. But wisdom is not about our intelligence, but understanding ourselves. And compassion is the inspiration for Amida Buddha's primal vow, to awaken all beings to the truth. So when we look deep within ourselves, we can and should do what we can in the world, no matter how large or small, to affect our collective karma. But even just being here in community, I think, can be enough. So this being our monthly memorial service as we honor friends and family members who have passed away in the month of May. I recognize this also can be an emotional time for many of you. It is for me. So what I'd like to do is have a moment of quiet sharing for those of you who are comfortable doing this. So I'm gonna share my screen and ask you to pull out your smartphones. I know that seems odd, but I'm encouraging you to look at your phones during a service, a Sunday service. And log on, and all, yeah, everybody, even Alex, your Pastor Alex and your, your confirmation class. They're welcome to you, by the way, all of your, your group. Um, so log on to menti.com. Maybe many of you might be familiar with this particular website. So M-E-N-T-I dot com. And where it says to enter the code, I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but enter the numbers 33 
335529. We'll say it again, 335529. So even you people on Zoom do this as well. So it's going to ask you to type in a word or a short phrase of how you're feeling right now. And you can make more than one entry because I'm sure many of you might be feeling different things. So if you're able, please type in your response. And, and I also want to reassure you that this is a safe space without judgment. Each feeling or emotion is okay. And these emotions are a product of your experiences. There's no right or wrong way to feel. And we can give ourselves the permission to feel what we feel and not what we're supposed to feel. So go ahead and type in your responses as you're doing, I see you doing already. And this is a word cloud, which means the more of you type in the same emotion, the size of the word gets bigger. The last time I did this was about gratitude, and somebody kindly said they're grateful for Reverend Todd. I thought, oh, that was really nice. But the word was continued to stay small. I'm like, come on. <laughs> so as a moment of reflection, I'd like you to take a moment for each of us to quietly take in all these entries. And by doing this, we're hearing and listening to each other's voice and understanding what we're all feeling right now. We're holding each other's emotions in a collective embrace. You know, Buddhism speaks about oneness, that we are all part of each other in the interdependence of our lives. But oneness does not mean sameness. We each have a karmic past that will influence our present condition. So we don't all think the same, nor really should we. We're not able to see the inner workings of each other, but this world cloud can give us a glimpse into each other's being. This is great. There are already 40, 48 entries. Wonderful. So we can see a, range, a wide range of thoughts and feelings being expressed. Many of us are trying to find stability, predictability, and maybe even some humor in our daily thoughts. I'm guessing the tired is from Dharma school kids. No? OK. You know, as humans, we feel that we can fully understand things, that we have full control over our lives. But really, our current situation in the world reminds us that this is not possible. We only see a small view of the world through our own lens of understanding. And Shinran Shonin, the founder of our tradition, revealed to us of the truth of our self-centeredness that lurks at our core. So it's our ignorance and afflictions that are the cause of our suffering. And given this truth, it's even more important that we share in the joys and pain precisely because we are in such a difficult time. Now it's more, even more important for kindness in our lives, kindness toward ourselves and kindness towards one another. Grateful to dad, that's a good one. As a dad. I'm going to leave this up here for a little while so you can all take in all the words. It's, there's a lot there. I think the size of the words, of grateful, happy, tired, sad, anxious, and peaceful, they are a very wide range of thoughts. So thank you for sharing your thoughts. So today is our monthly memorial service for the month of May, and, and this is really an opportunity to remember with gratitude those family members and friends who have gone before us. In the Jodo Shinshu tradition, the memorial service is not for the benefit of the deceased, but it's for us to come together to hear the Dharma and to give a spiritual offering through the chanting of sutras, the singing of songs, the recitation of readings, and being together as a Sangha. So thank you all for being here in person, and thank you all uh, to those logging on from other areas of the country on Zoom. So my, for my talk today, I'd like to talk about the feelings we may be experiencing during this monthly memorial service. Some of them are the emotions you typed at the beginning of this service and that are in the word cloud. They are all very wide ranging, but also all very important. So I'd like to first read a poem from Shinran Shoni's Hymns of the Pure Land found in the collected works of Shinran. So uh, please join me in Gasho as I read this passage. When we say Namo Amida Butsu, the countless Buddhas throughout the 10 quarters surrounding us a hundredfold, a thousandfold, Rejoice in and protect us. Namo Amidabutsu. 
So to me, this passage carries a lot of meaning, especially today. You know, it means that when we understand the profound interdependence of our lives, we can be comforted in the presence of all the Buddhas who help us see reality. But who are all these countless Buddhas? So remember, the term Buddha is a title and is not, does not always refer to a specific Buddha. So there are countless Buddhas in the Bodhisattvas that are referenced in this quote. Now, Mita Buddha, which is important in our tradition, which is represented in, by the statue, is really one Buddhist among many. And, but these, these Buddhas also include my father, my sister, I'm going to uh, invent a term, my bachan in law. So that's <laughs> my wife's, bachan is a Japanese word for grandma. And so um, my wife's bachan is my bachan in law, if you're wondering. So these are people who are being recognized in today's memorial service, who, when their lives ended in this world, were reborn as Buddhas to help guide us. So from my understanding, it's not being reborn in the literal sense. They're not ghosts or apparitions of some sort, but birthless births as Buddhas, who to support me, guide me, and help me see things more clearly. And they are present in our hearts and minds. So my entry in the word cloud, um, I listed two items that were personal for me. And my lists were um, sadness and joy. So these are emotions I feel today, but when I think about it, they're just some of the emotions that I really cycle through regularly. Now, although they, these seem like, might seem like different and distinct emotions and maybe even opposite, I don't think they really are. You know, they're all a part of a continuum of feelings that are all a part of me. They come and go, but lately I think many of my feelings are really amplified like being on a roller coaster or even on a seesaw. So I see them as two sides of the same coin, but not as opposites and not dual. So emotions are really inherently neither bad or good, right? And to think of them as such dichotomous terms is to really do yourself a disservice. Every emotion really tells us something about our inner experience that might be informing our outer experience. So emotion experts call this mindfully embracing an emotion. So what that means is rather than getting caught up in the drama of an emotion reaction, a mindful person observes the emotion without judging it as the right or wrong way to feel in a given situation. And what that does is it creates a space to choose a healthy response. So people who experience a rich array of emotions are really known to have better mental health and potentially greater happiness. All of our emotions really exist for a purpose. So giving myself permission to feel many different emotions really is helpful. So feeling no emotion is also okay. They're all valid and they're all based on my experiences and may make up a part of me. Now, as I said before, Buddhist wisdom is not about our intelligence, but about understanding ourselves. So it reminds me that I'm made up of causes and conditions and I'm not a permanent unchanging self. So Buddhism speaks of impermanence so that, that I know that these feelings that I have are temporary and don't define me. And what I was yesterday is not who I am today, and I'm constantly changing. The tr this truth teaches me that everything outside of me is also a part of me, that all things are really one. Now, in Buddhism, one thought is Buddhists try to get rid of the notion of self, right? But I think really the idea is to expand the idea of the self. So it's seeing beyond my ignorance and delusion to understand that I'm de in dependent on everything around me. But interdependence and impermanence does not make my emotions any less real for me. And I've come to realize that I should accept my emotions, not push back on them or try to deny them, but to understand this is my reality through my own personal lens of understanding, my personal filter, yet not necessarily true reality. But by accepting these feelings rather than pushing back against them, I can look at them differently. Difficult as it may, my, may be, my awareness given to me by the support of the light of Amida Buddha helps me to see these emotions in a different light. And that might sound a bit otherworldly, like relying on a supernatural being to fix me. But how I understand Amida Buddha is infinite wisdom and compassion or the understanding that I am not alone. And to see this support is like the opening hymn I read by Shinran that says, the countless Buddhas are there supporting me. 
You know, it, I think it also helps me to think of Buddha as not an object, like a, a being of some sort, but it's Buddha activity that helps me get, give me clarity in my life. So Amida Buddha is often portrayed in human form, like the statue. And some might interpret it in some sort of divine manner, but Amida is not a creator or a divine being that is separate from us, that controls the universe. Amida Buddha is the form given to inconceivable wisdom and compassion. So it's unconditional, unlimited, and universal. So Amida is not separated, separate from us. Amida is reality. So I'd like just to take a moment to exp explain my entry in the world cloud of sadness. Uh, this is a monthly memorial service for both my father and my sister and my Bachan in law. It's 44 years since the death of my sister and 26 years since my father died. You know, having a monthly memorial service is a way for me to remember not only my sister and father, but a reminder of the transiency of life. You know, they were both pretty young when they died. My father was 74 and my sister was 26. You know, although I call it sadness, it's also gratitude for what they have given me. You know, we stand on the shoulders of those who have come before us. There have been many, many times I reflected on their lives to give me hope and understanding from their actions and experiences. I know I would not be doing what I'm doing today, speaking to all of you, and especially taking the opportunity as often as I can to poke fun at David Tuguri. You know, without the foundation they led and their influence on in my life. But to be honest, I think I would, st no matter what, I would still poke fun at David Tuguri. So that's, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> and remembering our loved ones make us realize that our foundation was actually created even before we were born, while allowing us to realize the new life that unfolds before us. So I think you can all think of friends and family members with the same sense of gratitude. And although I'm talking about sadness, it's because of this sadness that I'm able to see and experience great joy. And that's the other emotion that I listed in the word cloud. So the joy I'm feeling today is really grounded in gratitude. And it's very much connected to my sadness. Gratitude and joy does not diminish the difficulties we face, but rather opens our hearts to the reality of our suffering and the suffering of others. So through the Nembutsu, we can discover gratefulness in the moments of our lives. Saying the Nembutsu out of gratitude to Amida Buddha is a response to something that is, that is supporting and helping your life. But you don't create it, you don't manipulate it, you don't get something, do something to get it. It's the awareness of knowing that I owe so much. You know, we're gonna sing Ondoksan at the end and, and for a closing gatha and really that's the message of that song. So at first thought, you know, joy can be thought of as a sort of general happiness. But in our culture, it's often thought that happiness should be something that we seek. It's gold, it's our, it should be our goal. This is something that we seek and to hold. But our culture, in our culture, we're obsessed with the pursuit of happiness. But in reality, happiness is more superficial and transient and often from things external to ourselves. So it makes us feel good, which is, which is great, and should be something we seek and enjoy, but we need to understand that it's something that doesn't last. But that, and that's not, it shouldn't be thought of as a pessimistic outlook, but to understand that it's all the more important to appreciate it when it's present. But I think joy is different. I think joy is a piece of humanity and delight that you're alive. It's a more deeply moving experience, and joy lays, lays the groundwork, but that's joy too, but that's different joy. Joy lays the groundwork for a richer life, a deep connection to the world around us. And there is joy all around us. It's something that is often hiding in plain sight. It's the lens of our, lens of our ego that makes it difficult to see. So joy is a moment of awe where you realize your connections, and my joy today is to see that we're able to get together in a meaningful way. So it's understanding that for me, because of my father and sister and the countless other causes and conditions that are part of my life, that we're all here together. And that to me is what joy is. So our founder Shinran Shonin, in his notes on once calling and many calling, he refers to joy as, uh, joy means to be gladdened in body and gladdened in heart. And Experiencing joy does not mean the world around us is perfect. So we still live our human ex experience, existence with all of our blind passions. 
But to be inside of your joy doesn't mean you're ignoring the challenges and darkness of the injustice of the world around you. You can have the various emotions we've all experienced, yet see joy. It is okay to feel joy in the small things and the connections we make to recognize what is already around us. So please join me in closing as, uh, in Gasho as I reread Shinran Shoni's poem from the Hymns of the Pure Land. When we say Namo Amida Butsu, the countless Buddhas throughout the ten quarters surrounding us hundredfold, a thousandfold, rejoice in and protect us. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu.